Hi guys, I'm Laura Vitale and on this episode of Laura in the Kitchen I want to share with you my Nona's delicious stuffed artichoke recipe. It's really easy and simple but we love it and I tend to make these often around um, around the springtime when artichokes are really pretty and beautiful and they're pretty much everywhere um, so I wanted to share it with you. Now I go over the list of the ingredients for the filling in a little bit, but for now, we are gonna work on the artichokes. Now, I've got some artichokes here, and these are really pretty. I got these in my local grocery store. Um, they're not super, super tight, and they're not super, super big. I prefer the ones that are kind of like medium-sized. Um, I just, I love artichokes. I'm like a freak for them. And I also have a lemon that I have because we're gonna rub each artichoke with the lemon so that it keeps them from turning brown. I'm gonna share with you how to prep them. This is how I prep them because my nonna, this is how she's done in my whole life, so that's what I do. I take the first, I would say, the first two layers of the leaves off because they're kind of like not that pretty and they're super duper small. So I just take the first two layers off. That looks about there, okay, like that. Then, I'm making a mess here. Move this out of the way. Now, you want your artichoke to sit, to kind of sit flat. So you just take your knife, you cut the base like so, that way it's sitting flat. Now, this fella over here is really delicious. So what I do is I kind of peel that and rub it with some lemon and boil them alongside the artichoke. I'm just gonna do one for now so I can show you. Now, it's important that you rub each cut as soon as you can with the lemon because it also keeps them, like I said, from turning brown. You can also fill um, a bowl with some water, add the juice of one lemon, and just dunk them in like so. I'm gonna cut the bottom of the rest of them and then we'll snip, we'll snip the, um, the leaves. Now that you have them trimmed at the bottom, they're sitting flat, all the, the first couple of layers of leaves are trimmed, you need to cut, you don't need to, I do. Why? Because these little tips can be quite painful <laughs> and quite prickly. So I like to just snip the very, very top of them because it just makes it much easier to eat and I don't worry about stabbing myself because they can have like, I don't know if you can see right there. You see that? That can be quite painful. So I just trim them. You can see I'm not cutting off a whole lot because I don't want to waste any of the artichoke, but I am cutting the very, very, very top of each tip just until I no longer can see that little that little spine and then once I get to this point just kind of right in the center of the heart of the artichoke where they're all about the same length I just take a sharp knife and cut it like so and then working one at a time you want to rub each side like so with lemon you won't really taste the lemon but this just helps everything from turning an awful brown color. And if they do, it'll be delicious either way, but not what I want right now. So I'm just going to trim the rest of them and get them ready to be cooked. Okay, now, really, really important is that the pot you cook them in needs to be able to fit the artichokes really nice and snug. You don't want them to kind of boil all over the place because then they're not gonna cook evenly. So just take your artichokes and kind of measure them before you go ahead and start cooking. Look how beautiful this is. Is that not gorgeous? I love that. For some reason, there's just something so beautiful about that. And I remember, um, I remember my Nona has, she, she, if you've ever watched our Italy vlogs, you'll know what I'm talking about. She has a huge window in her kitchen. And I remember like my grandfather used to come home with crates of artichokes and she, he used to just sit them on the windowsill and they'd be so beautiful, just kind of tumbling off the crate. Such a beautiful sight. Anyway. I'm gonna take some water, again, make sure they fit nice and snug. I'm gonna cover the artichokes. You can see they're not floating everywhere. It looks like it's a line of water, but it'll be just fine. And what I'm gonna do now, take these side pieces, because those are gonna be the cook's treat. I'm gonna munch on them when they're cooked, and I'm gonna bring these to a boil and then let them simmer for about 30 minutes. They're not gonna be fully cooked through yet, and this obviously is going to vary depending on how big your artichokes are. For a size like this, like about 30 minutes will be perfect for what I need. So I'm gonna get these cooking, let them cook for 30 minutes, and I'll show you how I like to drain them for a little bit, and then we'll get going on making the filling and popping them in the oven. 
My artichokes cooked for 30 minutes in salted boiling water. And now what I did as I just kind of put them sideways onto a baking sheet, it's actually on a rack over a baking sheet. And this kind of helps all the water kind of drain out of them so that doesn't make the filling all soggy. Now that we have those cooled, we're ready to proceed on the filling. And to make the filling, I've got some fresh breadcrumbs that I made by just pulsing a couple slices of Italian bread in my food processor. Parmigiano, you can also use Romano. I've got parsley and I've got garlic and you need really good quality extra virgin olive oil. The oven's ready and preheated at 375 and we're ready to go on. Now, I make mine with fresh breadcrumbs that I then saute to develop some color and dry them out because that's how my nonna does it, but you can skip this step and just use store-bought Italian flavored or regular breadcrumbs and we'll do the trick. But because she always did it this way, I do it this way, is I just take fresh bread, it's actually not even fresh, it's a stale bread, it was from yesterday, and I just pulse it until it kind of, it's, it's fine, but there's also like bigger chunks in there. And then what I do is I just kind of dry it out in a skillet and let it develop a little bit of that golden brown color. And then I'm, that's kind of like my breadcrumb, um, if you like my breadcrumb of choice, my breadcrumb method of choice. But you can use a panko if you wanted to, or regular breadcrumbs, that's probably the best option. But I'm just gonna wait for these to develop some color. We'll add them back in the bowl make our mixture, you know, make our filling, mix it all up and uh, get to stuffing. You can hear that my breadcrumbs are dry. They've developed a little bit of color and they've cooled for about just a few minutes. You want them to be lukewarm. It doesn't have to be completely cool. Now I'm going to add pretty much everything else. I've got my parm. You can use pecorino. You can use romano. You can use whatever you like. Parm is what I choose because I always have it on hand. A little bit of garlic, although if this was my dad, it would be absolutely no garlic because he doesn't care for such a strong garlic flavor. I do, clearly, so I add it right in. And then you'll need about three to four tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. This is what's gonna keep everything really moist and what's gonna make the mixture, you know, the right, give it the right consistency, the right texture. But you just wanna take your time and you just wanna mix this until the olive oil is evenly distributed throughout your breadcrumb mixture. And if you have to, you can just add a little bit at a time, a little bit more here and there. And you can see I haven't added any salt and pepper to this because I don't need to. The cheese gives you a little bit of saltiness, but also I did boil the artichokes. I did add a pinch of salt to my water after I added the artichokes in. And I wanted to mention that to you because it is really the only chance you have to salt the artichokes themselves. Okay, this is looking fantastic. Now let me show you what I got. I've got a baking pan. Now, just as important as it was for your pan that you boil these in to fit the artichokes in tightly, it's just as important that you get a baking pan that fits all of them in there really tight and secure. So all I do is I just take a little bit of the mixture. I don't like to over over stuff because I think that that just makes them really dry. I just take a little bit of the filling and just kind of pop that into each leaf as I go around. So, like that. And it's just, the presentation is so pretty. You can also do it like my nonna does, hold it over the bowl, but then you gotta just make sure you use your fingers to kind of spread everything around to make sure every little leaf has got the filling. My artichokes are stuffed. As you can see, I don't stuff the very, very center, the sort of very core of the artichokes, the heart of the artichokes. It's hard to get into, and then you have to choke, and it's just, um, you know, kind of impossible to stuff. So I just kind of stuff as far up as I could possibly go, and then I stop there. I'm also gonna take a little bit more olive oil. This is really important because this is what's gonna keep the artichokes really nice and moist as they bake. And I'm just gonna drizzle a little bit of olive oil onto each one. And also, as you can see, I put this over top of a baking sheet so that it makes it just easier to slide in and out of the oven. Now I've got some water here. I need to add about, an, I would say, three quarters of an inch of water to the bottom of this. So you wanna make sure that you don't hit the, the stuffing because you don't want it to get it all mushy. That's about right, maybe just a teeny, teeny, tiny, teeny tad bit more. Perfect. I'm gonna cover this with some aluminum foil and I'm gonna pop these back into the oven for about 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, I'm gonna remove the foil and let them bake for 10 additional minutes without any foil. And I'll show you what they look like when they're done.
My artichokes were in the oven. They baked covered for 30 minutes. I took off the foil and they cooked for an additional 10 minutes. Now keep in mind that the time will vary depending on the size of your artichoke. Could take a little more, could take a little bit less. So keep that in mind. I cannot tell you how much I love the look of these because it's just to me, it's, I don't know. It's, there's just something about it that just reminds me of home. And then you see this water down here? Well, it mixed up a little bit with that uh, with that olive oil, and then I like to just drizzle a little bit of that on there because that's got really good flavor, actually. And then these leaves just kind of, mmm, 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 mmm. Take that. I feel like I need to be alone. This is like a taste of my childhood. See how the bottom leaves just kind of come off really easy? That's how you know your artichoke is done. If it takes a really long time and you have to tug at it, then it needs a little bit more time to cook. But these are fantastic, and they can be and should be on your Easter table this year. You can make smaller versions as well, and it will be a beautiful centerpiece for your table because the best centerpieces are the kind you can eat. <laughs> Go to lauraintheekitchen.com to get the written recipe. Make them for your family. Let me know how you love them. If you love them as much as I do, I hope you enjoyed spending time with me and I'll see you next time. Bye.